And we are live. We got some new uh, camera positions today, so we got it all set up. So I'm Pastor Jeremy with War Eagles Ministry, and we have an awesome speaker tonight, uh, Pastor Kyle Kitchens. Uh, we're going to do uh, a little bit of worship, and then he's got an awesome word for us, and I believe he's going to uh, recap his, his dream that he did at his church. Uh, it's an awesome dream, and God's... Uh, moving us all into unity so it's, it's gonna be good so uh let's go ahead and open it up to some some worship if are you ready yeah you paper talk? all right well, Give all right me paper so talk? we're gonna pray first if yes. y'all are good with that and, and if you're not well <laughs> too bad, bad. <laughs> too bad <laughs> they get the joke but i won't say it on my phone. that's awesome thank you anyway sorry go ahead so, Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit being right here. Lord, we just welcome your sweet presence. We love you, God. We just thank, thank you, God, you, for taking control and having your way in this place, Lord. And we just worship and glorify you together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. You, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
worship you by the actions, the love that we show to our wife and our family. God. Yes. We worship you with the perseverance and prayer, God, throughout the day. We worship you with lives laid down, Lord, and discipline. We worship you with obedience, God. When you tell us to do something, we commit in our hearts, we look firmly to that yes, God. We will obey, no matter what the cost. We worship you by being willing to endure persecution by standing with those who already are being persecuted yes, throughout the world. We worship you, God. We worship you, God, not just on Sunday, but on Monday. Yes. We worship you on Monday when we have to go to work, when we have to do our best to keep our heads above water while the demands pile up on us, God. We worship you, Lord, while we look to you throughout the day and we, we experience victory like we've never had before yes. because it's you that's working through us and in us, God. We worship you with the power that you gave to us first. We worship you with the strength that you provide. Yes. We worship you with the spirit that you gave us, God. Yes, so yes. liberally, so great is the love that you've lavished on us that we should be called children of the Most High and possess the precious gift of the Holy Spirit within yes. us, God. We worship you, God, with our hearts and with our lips, God, refined and, 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 and sharpened, God, to speak your word. And to only say the things which please you, God, yes. by constant use, yes. God, by constant yes. discipline to know what pleases you mm. and to speak only those things, God. Yes. We worship you with our mind, God, and subject it, Lord, to the Holy Spirit, that we have the mind of Christ, yes. which contains beauty and, and, and riches beyond what we can ask, think, or imagine, Father. Mm. We worship you in reality in the world that we step into in our reality on Monday. Yes. We worship you in the reality of Tuesday. Hallelujah. We worship you in truth, God, in reality, and in the Spirit, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your sweet presence here, Lord. I just feel led to pray as David prayed. Father God, do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Such a precious gift you are to us. Who are we, Lord, that you would bestow yourself to us, Lord God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, I don't think I've ever done this. Um, before we before we pray and do, um, I feel led to read our mission statement. I've, I don't think I've ever done this. I've had it posted on the wall and different things, but. And I've got it up on the Facebook page. But to fulfill our mission statement is to fulfill the great commission assigned to all believers in the faith by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. As Christians, we are King Jesus' subordinates imbued with his power and divine authority, sealed within us by the power of God's Holy Spirit. We are to go out into the whole earth training and equipping disciples unto our Lord. Yes. We are to lay hands on the sick so that they may be made well. We are to cast out demons and trample upon spiritual serpents and scorpions through prayerful warfare. We are to be atmosphere shifters carrying the presence of Almighty God with us wherever we go. We are the salt and preservative of the earth, the light on a hill shining for the lost to find their way. Always, we are to point the way back home to our Master Jesus. Yes. And the scripture verses uh, he gave me for the mission statements. It's Hebrews 10, 22 through 25. And the Amplified is, Let us approach God with a true and sincere heart in unqualified assurance of faith, having had our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water, let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering, for
For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. And let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of some. And that's true now more than ever. But encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. And again, that is Hebrews 22 through 25. Um, so let's go around the room, and if anybody has praise reports to share, you know, three to five minutes. And, uh, man, I'm excited about tonight. I already feel the Lord's presence all over the worship, and... There's plenty of food over there, um, and we're going to do communion tonight, too, after. Um, so, whew, let's just, let's just take about like 20, 30 more seconds and just, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, our focus is on you, Lord. Do whatever you want to do here tonight, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Lord, for fresh fire. The Lord is in the room, guys. Yes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Rebrendo Kuriata Shundarada Hiti. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. He andore a Yoshu. I hear the Lord saying, I am so proud of y'all. That she, or she said you, but he meant everybody gathered here. I am so proud of you. Hmm. <laughs> I hear the Lord say, I call you my beloved. Mm. Mm. Keep going and run the race well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. While we were worshiping, I was I felt like the Lord was kind of giving me a I don't, know if it, I don't know if this is like a vision or not, but it just I pictured in my mind a shepherd. He was the shepherd, and I saw his mm. staff, and it was like he was ushering us to sit around his feet and receive his word. And I just, I just wow. felt so. Oh, I just loved wow. it. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I was trying to compile what all the Lord was just speaking to me. I heard finish a lot. Like I, I heard him say, "I'm not finished with what's going on in the earth," and hmm. I'm not, he he's not finished with us, yes. but we're getting also as the race we're getting close to the finish. Yes, amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Uh, wow. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Woo, man. He's doing something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody has any prophetic words, go ahead. And just the floor is yours before we go into prayer. I hear the Lord saying, I'm speaking to hearts right now. I'm speaking to hearts right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that vision. You are the great shepherd, Lord. Yes. There's no such thing as a small vision. or God, we thank you for sanctified minds. It's not just figments of our imagination, God, when you show us visions. Thank you, Lord. We believe you. We trust you. God, your word says if there's any prophets among us, you will reveal yourself to them in dreams and visions. God, you're, you're a God that does not change. You're still doing that today. 
how we know there's a difference between a new covenant prophet and an old covenant prophet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Uh, you're, you are a God that you change not. Thank you, Lord. Um, before we go into prayer, you want to share your vision that you had earlier? Or do you want to share it now since he's got his dream? Because it kind of goes along with that. Yeah, go ahead. And then okay. it's we all build on each other. We're not That's right. you know, well, I mean, I like Legos, That's what but, I but stronger substance. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you want yeah, me like to Lego share now or at the end then, so I just, but um, here, I'm just going to come sit down. At least for a minute, hopefully. Um, so this morning, uh, during worship at uh, our Early service, I guess. We'll say that. <laughs> um, the Lord was showing me that... So, after this one comes, we will... Um, okay. Okay. Can you give it to Nana? She'll cool it off. Can you give it to Nana to cool off? Yeah, can you give it to Nana? She'll cool it off for you. Thank you. She might spit on it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anyways, um, so there'll be a total of seven of us, but also we'll have a, really a total of se seven children since we've got two in heaven. But um, but with that being said, so that's just for our family. But then the Lord was also showing me then for the seven ministries coming together that we are each a watchtower and when all connected we make a stronghold and fortress wow. so I felt led when we got home light on a hill to um, I was like that's that seems an odd number for watchtowers for a fortress you know <laughs> but I saw that there's one in Faith Istanbul Turkey and it was <clears throat> Originally, it was first constructed. Constantinople. Like, Constantinople is three of the walls are from the walls of Constantinople, but they said it was one of the it was like the last fortress that was like it was a, like a stronghold. That wow. So, and then the fact that it's right in the middle of Turkey. Oh wow! Yeah. And which is you know. Very, very hostile. Yes. Yeah, well, and also, it's believed that that's going to be one of the last, one of the countries in the end times, you know, fighting against Israel. Right. So, what I was then sharing with Jeremy was that the Lord was telling me, we're going to be that fortress in the middle of all of that. Wow. So, yeah. Amen. So. Praise God. But. Stuff. I really love the fact that it's like it takes all of the parts. God, like mm -hmm. God, really, really ordained us to work together as a community. He yes. really, he really loves. Yeah. That. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you look at the picture of this fortress, it's very oddly shaped. Yeah. Because we're we're they, supposed to be peculiar people, right? Yeah. But we're odd. But yeah. so, because that's what I'm saying. Because as I far as <laughs> they would originally with <laughs> watchtowers, they would be like certain shapes. To make yes. it like circular and everything, or hexagonal, yeah. or if, like if you think as far as like the Great Wall of China, it's a long line, yeah. Yeah, that's and true. they just had well, stations. It's so. not really a long line. In it's yeah, it's, okay. it's kind yeah. of like yeah. well, it's a continual wall yes. that just goes so with hills and right. valleys. But so with this, it, it's a Made very odd bodies. shape because they didn't they they did it at certain times. They added on. Here and there, but now it's a complete <clears throat> structure with seven watchtowers. Wow. So. Uh, story, if I may. We were talking this week, and I said, you know, since I was little, I always felt like God had me set up as a watcher. I'm like, mm. I always <laughs> feel like I'm the one that's always saying, danger, danger, danger. Mm. And he was talking about that, too. And we were like, oh, my gosh. So you're saying watchtower, and we were saying we're like watchers on the wall, mm -hmm. you know, mm. calling out to the people. <clears throat> you know, I was feeling like Noah building this ark. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. Yeah. Are you gonna, once the door closes, 
Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so much stuff is happening. Like, we named this room the Ark, and uh, uh, Jeremiah Johnson just started his new ministry, and they called it the Ark Fellowship. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Marcus Rogers started, the, they built their building, and they called it the Ark. Oh, and the man. Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, wow. so it shall, so shall be the son, coming of the Son of Man. Yes. And we had somebody prophesy over us, and it resonated several years back that this was going to be like an underground railroad for people. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just really, really cool stuff. Yeah. But the, one of the primary missions, though, is to teach and train people in the gifts of the Spirit. We've, we've had, you know, uh, where we had a teaching night, and the Lord said, don't do the teaching practice prophecy and we just like all prophesied all over it's just whatever god wants to do but uh let's go into uh does anybody have anything else that's good stuff y'all all right i'm gonna start with you even though you're usually a yellow flag maybe next weekend when you go to camp perfect yeah how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> Mommy just said the thing, so okay. Okay, go ahead, babe. Pencil one. Okay, Any prayer requests? <laughs> um, mom, mom just said that her, well, since she had a rough night, my dad had a rough night, so they did miss church this morning, even though they were planning on it. But um, they just it was. Rough night and last, last week night. was their first week. Yes, and they were planning on joining today. So, <laughs> um, so but pray for them because it was just she had a rough night. So, all right. thank you. All right, is that it? Um, Praise reports. Anything happened this week? Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's been very busy. <laughs> with kids getting back to school, yes, uh, but uh, yeah. but so with that, it's good. Um, so, but um, I'm all right. Alive to be awake and alive and breathing. And alive so. and breathing. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Um, do we share about Angel's Angel? Sure. It was good. We went to Second and Charles, and the Lord moved. Um, Talk a little louder for the mic. Um, it was really good. We went to Second and Charles yesterday in a gas station, and the Lord really moved. We were able to save some souls, minister to some souls, so that was great. Awesome. Plant some seeds as well. Um, all I can think of right now. Prayer request uh, to have um, a really, you your fast. really success. Oh yeah, a very support. I finished my Daniel fast. Ooh. Wow, good job. Well, I didn't do it. I, I, I stopped wrestling with God and I allowed Him to do it through me. Um, there you go. And then a uh, prayer request is just to have a positive outlook just for the work week. I'm an author, just to go really smooth. Um, and be oh, thank you. Uh, just, just for that work. No deal. Okay. Kyle? Uh, Come on up. Or prayer requests. Zoop! You know, I mean, thing that we did, you got, well, the only thing that, you know, not the only thing, but something that we're super excited about is God's really moving and not just our family but in our ministry and connecting us with so many new people and you know he's been waking me up for the fourth watch for a while now. That watch me. Uh, yeah. There you go. So I've been getting yeah, up at, at three and he's just been you know pouring into me and this is it's been a long time so like there's been years where I'll go where I just am not like feeling the Lord but you know because I'm strong in my word and I'm grounded in that mm. um, so that that helps a lot but this is a time where it's like we're just pouring and pouring and pouring and mm. not stopping so yes, I know yes, that it's yes. been good for Nina oh, and yeah. for family um, and for um, so I'm just super excited to see what God's going to do 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Like we know something's coming. We I'm do. not sure feel everyone it. can mm. feel it. Y'all something's feel coming it. for sure. Yeah. So we're super excited about that. Um, pray, Thank you, uh, pray request. Let's pray for our children. Yes. They're starting school this week. Um, pray for my yes, pray for my <laughs> wife especially. And his wife too. Because she's doing well, so no. yeah. It'll take a couple weeks, but y'all will get they'll get no, he's you know, still right and it'll be much better. Yeah. Also, let's pray for my youngest Nora. She yes. is nonverbal. Well she knows about she knows her ABCs, one, two, three, you know, all the way up to she's she's working on up to twenty now, but she knows her one through ten, she knows her colors and she's we don't think that Nora is blanked out in there we think that she literally is just not able to communicate what she is what she knows mm -hmm. and then she has the she has the nature of if she doesn't really care about what you're talking about she doesn't listen to you at all is mm -hmm. what it would appear to be but as soon as you say a key word of something that she does like all of a sudden it's full yeah. attention it's just, she knows like if i say let's go potty she knows to go to the bathroom yeah, or let's go bath. be in the bathroom she, she knows tub. to go do that Runs to the tub. Tub. she understands it she's just Runs. having trouble i think you know, transferring that yeah. to her mouth. So we're working on getting her evaluated. She's going to be she's, four in yeah. September, so late she's September. Three now, about to be four. Yeah. But you know, we're really believing that the Lord is going to to, heal to her break this, to whatever this yeah. is. Amen. Uh, because we felt as though we had a typical child whenever she was born, and we don't know what transpired. We, and you know, they claim autism actually begins to 18 months old usually you begin to see these things yeah so she had speech in the beginning and then she began to regress and then she locked down for a while and did not for what about a year it seemed like maybe yeah. she just would get mad when you try to ask her to say a word mm -hmm. so we just assume it's something like rash wasn't even he didn't really say anything even until he was so people three. thought he was going to be slow and he's actually in the gifted class yes. well this so is it was until he was four so yeah. don't think he I'm didn't talk he said some words yeah. He said some words like when he was one, and then he just never spoke. And we were like thinking, like, is there in other couples right. and stuff? We're like, our kids speaking at one yeah. and two, yeah, and we're like, okay. Yeah. So it's, but Vash is now yeah. in the gifted classes. Yeah. So he got I'm, seventh in the nation for perennial math. It, like, yeah, whatever. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Nora is very stimulated by numbers and colors and her letters. She she gravitated towards letters. We were on the I don't want to take up all the time, but no, you we were on the playground and she found the letters where it had the alphabet on the actual playground equipment with the braille and she'd run her finger over the braille and she she read. I was like, this child is drawn to the alphabet. And she's trying to tell us she wants to communicate, but something is just seems like it's throttling her. But yeah, I mean, we could. I don't want to declare anything over her life. I want, if anything, I'll declare that Amen. God is going to absolutely bring her out. I think once she got, he gives her her voice fully, she's going to have a big voice. So. Miracle child. Yes, yes miracle, right. miracle. Um, Babe, she's messing so, with yeah, I, That was pretty much my, I think that's my turn, because I, I was going to say, to speak to his, um, what he said about God waking him up, it has been amazing. Because they used to be the one that got out of bed earlier or whatever. <laughs> And it's like, I'm kind of jealous now, but I'm like, shift. don't come in here and wake me up. I'll get up on my own. Because I'm like, what is God doing in you? He's up drinking coffee. He is already he's bouncing around the house. And in his word, he's already done a full toe of in a scripture and every. I'm like, goldfish. So he was already probably in the word, in the ministry, doing all that. But I can see that God is like, turn this thing into overdrive now. So praise the Lord. So it's coming, you know. Amen. Prophet Leo. Um, hey, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing week. Um, it was actually a lot of spiritual warfare this week. Um, you know, uh, Monday started off, and I was just not ready for it. I was, I'm with a brand new team. Um, yeah, I don't even know about this. Uh, with, uh, anyway, it's... Um, system security team, but it was really challenging because I'm in a new place and I didn't know what to do, um, I don't know any of the people, and then it's kind of like, you know, a new situation and getting back to work as well since I've been kind of on a relaxed, kind of um, not quite so strict time schedule with work because I've been in like this transition phase, um, but now I'm with a new team, so it's, it's opened up a whole new dynamic, so I want to pray for... My my new team that uh, would be able to you know be a witness there that the atmosphere there would change that people would 
Mm. Even if uh, I, you know, chances to evangelize, yes, and chances to, you know, demonstrate God's love, yes, chances to bring the glory of God, yes, and and just to have victory as well, because mm. you know, negative thoughts try to bombard me. If yeah. I get too busy, I'll get overwhelmed by like, um, you know, negativity or like just being, you know, work overworked or whatever it is, um, you know, and th that happened on Monday, but um, actually it was Apostle Jeremy that prayed over me, and like, I, I felt a lot better after he prayed for me, um, so, um, yeah, other than that, just family, family is a constant prayer request for me until my wife and I are just, you know, our relationship is restored, yeah. so, Jesus. yeah, I can work miracles for sure, mm -hmm. So. Oh, you said until it's restored. Until it's restored. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Brother Alvin. <laughs> uh, so, sort of a unique <coughs> praise this week, because it, it reminds me of the struggle. But the praise is that God is always so good, mm -hmm. and that He's so patient. Uh, so the past two weeks, I've just been doing this military exercise, and it's just really sort of stressful, longer hours. Mm. Um, but I've just been praying to God like Lord help me to be humble yes. help me to be humble and they always say be careful what you pray for because he's going to give it to you oh. <laughs> so, I got sure a story enough, when you're done <laughs> oh this opportunity <laughs> you gave me this opportunity to be humble mm. I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday or something and uh, one of my co-workers they pretty much just put me on the spot and like wanted me to teach a class oh. and in my head I'm like well, I'm the I'm the chief. You don't you don't talk to me like that. You don't put me on the spot. Yeah. And I was so mad. I really I was like I really wanted to choke this guy out. <laughs> but you know I just I just held my tongue and like just some verses was coming to me. And really it was that next day, uh, just thinking about it. Uh, you know I need to be humble. And why why am I so mad? Mm. Uh, and the Lord was like, No, you 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 can have a pride problem mm. like you need to address your pride first mm, like yeah. not this guy like uh and, and so i just thank the lord um that i was able to realize that and, and like the word says the lord he disciplined those whom he loves oh, yeah. that's, that's very and, true you know sometimes it doesn't feel good <laughs> um, no it ha i can't think of one time it felt good the kids aren't <laughs> like spank me again dad yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, that he still loves me even yes. with my pride issues and my yes. sin issues. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, like, I can just always go to him. Um, it's a process. And, and then, like, it, yeah. it, it was training. It taught me something. Like, That's right. You know, That's next right. time, hopefully, I'll, I'll be better and I'll recognize it sooner. And, it's a humble uh, outlook. Just be more humble. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good place to be. It's yeah. a very humble. Real quick, a quick, quick time. I've shared this before, but uh, one time I was praying on my face, and I don't know if. You heard me say this story before. I was praying on my face. This is several years back. And I thought it was like the best prayer. And it was probably a religious spirit. I was like, God, keep me humble. You know, I, you know, like, I was like, man, this is thinking like, this is a really good prayer. Like, <laughs> I was like, God, I was like, God, keep me humble. And the Lord immediately spoke to me and said, do you want me to keep you humble or do you want to humble yourself? Yes. And I was, and it just like hit me, I like that fear of the Lord hit me like, whoa, okay, like you could crush me. So uh, I'll humble myself. Man. So that's, that's one of those things. It's like praying for patience and hitting every red line. It will give you opportunities. It's not just like insta down, like he'll give us downloads for wisdom and stuff, but like for patience, he's not just going like, oh, I'm patient now. Yeah. Patience yeah. is how we act while we're waiting, not the wait. Yeah. Amen. So, I'm getting blown up here. Go ahead, Dad. Just uh, continue to play for family and the things to have and every, you want to see everybody you saved especially in your family. Yes. Uh, Labors across the path, and as Alvin was speaking, um, I have this little saying that if you think you're humble, you're not. And always remember John three thirty. He must increase, I must decrease, and and so.
three years old? Yeah, three and a half. She's yeah, three and I was thinking yes, about sir. fast. She didn't talk. And that's what? Yeah. Sorry, that's we what we're saying. talking about. Well, hold on. We God. got an urgent prayer request. Yolanda got in a car wreck. Somebody, what? Somebody rammed her on the way here. Oh, no. But uh, she said her legs hurt. They're waiting on the ambulance. Jesus. So, sorry. I'm not trying to cut you off. Let's, yeah, I'm going to lift her up right now. Yeah. So, Father God, we just thank you for... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for sending your angels around her, Lord God, that you are, you are the healer. You are mm, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Lord. God, we just thank you that she's alive, Lord God. Father God, we thank you that... Uh, God, that just you surround them with your peace, Lord God. Let this be a witnessing opportunity, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. upon her mind and her heart. We pray for comfort upon her body in the name of Jesus. Anything that's hurting right now, we speak healing to it in the name of Jesus. We speak healing to her muscles and to her bones, Father. They can relax and recover and go back to the way they're supposed to be, Father. We speak to her mind, Lord, to be to be uh, the confusion to be bound in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. Father, as the doctors examine her, Father God, let them find less than what's wrong with her. Yes. Praise you, Father. Let them be amazed in the name of Jesus, Father God. Give her peace that passes all We pray not just for Yolanda, but for the, the other driver involved, Lord, and anyone else who was involved, Lord God, that they are healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. That everyone's protected and kept safe. Yes. As Jeremy said, that this will be a witnessing opportunity. Yes, Lord. Lord. God. Yes, Lord. Not just to the other driver, but to all those around. I texted her asking if she wanted. One of us to come, yeah. but if she's about to, it's not, the ambulance is about to be there. So, yeah. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I mean, thank you, Jesus. You're not gonna be able to see her if she's gonna. Yeah, you, they, they won't allow hospital visits right, right now. Well, believe me, we've tried yeah, for ministry a ton of times. Yeah. That's 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 well, I I kept feeling my phone vibrate, and I was thinking who's calling while we're doing the service. They won't let you see her in the ER. Not right when they're getting her there. Thank you, Jesus. I'm I'm believing she's she's good. I texted her. I'll keep my eye on the phone this time. Um, but yeah, like how you said, if she called, then. That's thank right. you, Jesus. It's gonna be a witnessing opportunity. Yolanda, if you're watching this later, so witnessing opportunity. There's a purpose. There's a purpose for it. Prayer requests. Uh, Kind of like what Mr. Charles was saying, just for my family, all my family, uh, specifically my younger sister Tasha. Mm. Come to know the Lord. Okay. Amen. Mm. I have a brother named Sean, but he's not a tie. I don't even think he likes ties. Does he wear ties? I don't know Were you in the middle? I'm sorry. Go he, ahead. He was telling me something about Nora, telling us, and I was like, <laughs> the Nora, sister Yolanda's condition, seriously. When the world looks for the the solved 
head and shoulders above mm -hmm. and the beautiful God the, or the heart the David yep. of the world Amen. his heart's right towards him yes. Yes. and Nora is you know she's special but you want to see things that she does and when she comes out I'll let you go play outside and you it, it will be godly not, not, not what the world we hear about where, where Sean lives in the in the parts of Atlanta they at two to three years old they get tutors and prepare people godly preparation and great their plans than worldly She's okay. opened her third eye. That's possessed. Exactly. It's kind of like that, only yeah. she's not like the spiritual side. She's just, yeah. My grandmother prayed all of us get into the kingdom. Okay. Flat out. She wasn't spirit filled. She had no bad shit in Methodist, but that's okay. She uh -huh. prayed us all in. Right. And um, so my prayer closet has got all my cousins up there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And my cousins, my cousins were all Christians. But um, my sister was married to a pastor. She got wounded by the little country churches. Uh, That's all I'm going to say about that. Not a pastor. What is it? Methodist. Methodist pastor in the little country churches. She got wounded. She right. basically got up and told them, I hope you're better to the next. Yeah. Yeah. We so she that. walked out and turned her back on the Lord from that. And, um, I mean, that's, that's where she's at. And um, so she's indoctrinated all her kids, you know, is it new age? Like a new age? Pretty much. Well, I mean, just, just yeah, it, it's the combination of all the religions. Besides raise Jesus, them. don't do that anything. anything to, that yeah, she yeah. just yeah. didn't raise them in the church. Now, she ended up marrying a guy that loved the Lord. He sang in the church choir. <laughs> so, um, his daughter, got. I went to her baptism, where she got baptized in a country church tank, you know, in a tank. With the future husband? With her, yeah. And, future husband. And he's, but, but she pulled him away. I mean, she thinks, does everything to pull him away. I mean, COVID hit, it's like, no, you don't need to go. And so they're not reading their Bible now. But it's still in there somewhere because God holds on, you know. But um, anyway, she's making comments on his. No, she's been doing that for years. That that's she that, hates me. That means, she's, that means she's reading it. Hello. That's right. Oh, yes. So, and it's sticking around. But yeah, um, she's reading it. Laughs at my videos and yeah, yeah. false it. prophet, all whole nine yards. But I mean, but that means she's reading it. So that, that, that means she's going to be interested because she's reading it. Yeah. She, she's, she unfriended me a long time ago on Facebook, but she's still like just purposely going on my Facebook. Like, I wonder what Jeremy's up to. Like, <laughs> why do you care? Uh, because. But I mean, it's spiritual. It, but that means she's reading it. So, but we, she needs prayer, and her family needs prayer because she's trying to 
it's not like I'm sending her stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's not like I'm annoying her or something. Well, she is, you are annoying her. Well, yeah. I'm annoying the devil in her. Well, she brings my stuff, so, and my stuff's bad stuff, but, <clears throat> yeah, I totally understand this. I was telling... I don't. <laughs> to, it's back during the, like, the, the beginning, I'd say about a year after the pandemic, so I guess it wasn't right in the beginning, but in that period, you know, the world, everybody whatever side they were seem to be on they really dug down and got crazy crazy right so i would just i wanted to just share space with her not say anything about politics i just was like you're my sister first let's put all this aside but her her conversation always flips right back to it it doesn't matter you can say car and she finds a way to turn it into well, cars blah blah, blah. yeah but anyway Need to get the electric. yeah <laughs> <laughs> hurting the environment yeah there you go well, she, um, we, it ended up being something, something, and, and the Lord revealed to me in that moment, I was like looking in her eyes, but I didn't see my sister. I saw that, that spirit, those spirits that are operating through her, and she, the way that she looked at me, and the thing, I was like, the Lord said, don't address her. Address those spirits that are at work in her life. In other words, start praying against the spirits that I'm showing you in her life. Yes. And if, if from that moment on, it truly has changed how I see people that operate that way. Now, that doesn't mean I don't get irritated. And mm -hmm. My husband has to continually correct me because I'll fall right back into yeah. anger. Like, <laughs> you call Jesus that. Or, you know, it could be any it's just, righteous, you know, righteous ish, indignation, ish ish. anger. Yeah, and the Lord's like, Nina, my son didn't do that. The last, I was telling Kyle today, the last miracle Jesus did that I'm aware of is you know put the ear back on his enemy so i mean yeah. we just gotta be we gotta do better yeah uh, there's a balance he did he did call religious people snakes and serpents and and your child of your father the devil <laughs> <laughs> so it's a balance it's about it's it's doing whatever the holy spirit leads you to case by case scenario so but most of the time, as the Bible says, the righteousness of man does, or the the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness yes, of God. Amen. So, like when we're constantly yelling at the kids, <laughs> sometimes it's needed. Yeah, like if sometimes. you don't li like, but you never jump right to it. You show yeah. grace, grace, grace. Sure, You're not listening. Time to time yeah. to get angry. <laughs> I told him, would you rather me yell, or am I just going to get a belt and strike you? Yep. Yeah. 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 Would you rather me just do a surprise, like a sniper attack on him? Sni <laughs> There's the plug for tonight, <laughs> right there. <laughs> You're just like, Leah, <laughs> ninja. <laughs> we can get our kids to do anything. Oh, <laughs> man. I told Nina earlier, I didn't realize she was Hispanic because she pulled out her flip flop. No, chunk of us. Chunk of us. Boomerang. I was she running towards her and snatched it and put, I was like, because <laughs> this is actually. Good little spanker without you know <laughs> yes. without being too hard. My mother would give us bolo paddles in our stockings, oh. and it was like I don't oh think goodness. that's fun to play with. Right. Because I know what's going to end up that happening with it right. when the string breaks. It then becomes that's the right. spanking tool. Yes. So this I don't like this for a Christmas present. It's not fun. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no you know this is a double. <laughs> this is this is no, a double. I don't like it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, yeah, I didn't really have anything. Uh, did get attacked recently, but already we already prayed against it, and the Lord took it away. You know, you can feel like sometimes when there's word curses. Uh, you got something to pray for? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So just direct general direction from the Lord. Um, whether He wants me to go back to work full time while doing full time ministry, um, so or maybe like a part time thing. We're we're praying about the direction. Mm -hmm. But God has been supernaturally providing for us. But we know there's different seasons, and Paul was a tent maker, and yeah. marketplace yeah. ministry is full time ministry Amen. too. I mean, so, yeah. so it's it's just whatever God wants us to do, you yeah. know, and being faithful to that. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just we're just trying to. I get cracked up because I see faces in married couples, and I'm like, I'm we're just trying to be we're just trying to be good Christians. <laughs> We're just trying to. We're just trying. We're just trying I'm to be two we're Christians. Not, we're not giving in to. Just trying to be too Anxiety and worry. No, I ain't even worried about anxiety. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I got no worries. My my mom was telling me on Friday when I went over there. 
my dad wasn't home at the time, so she said, she said, your dad asks me, are they doing okay? And she's like, yes, honey, they're doing fine. Yeah, there's some people she's, that think I'm just a bum. She's got to reassure ah! my dad. Like, like I, Chrissy tells him all the time, like, he's on the phone constantly doing counseling and praying for people and doing all this stuff. Like, it is a full-time thing. Yeah. Like, yes. we've done suicide he counseling as, and as far as financially, marriage counseling. Because and we've got... If they're worried, they could always sew into the ministry. <laughs> <laughs> but he ain't doing that, so is he really worried? Oh my god. They're yeah. I'm just saying. I ain't going to tell him that to his face. Because that would be manipulation. And I'm not about that. But mom's for us and she keeps reassuring him. Yes. Trying. Trying to reassure him. Hey, I'm just saying. Alrighty. Well, let's yeah, go before the Lord in prayer and. Uh, I have mom lead because she's the secretary or whatever and writes everything down. So. <laughs> or we could go around the room and everybody pray for their own thing and we agree with it. Whatever, whatever God wants to do, right? Well, I'm gonna do whatever God wants to do. How about that? I'll just keep throwing it back and forth. Go ahead. <laughs> well, well, how about you lead and then uh, we'll go if anybody feels led to jump in at any point. no distance in the spirit realm and yes. we just pray over cat and father god we come against this ms that's, that's just attacking her body yes. Yes. and we thank you that father that her that she's healed father god from the top of her head to the tips of her toes we come jesus, against it because the blood of jesus covers yes. her yes. and father we thank you oh father we thank you and agree with her that by Jesus Christ she is healed. And Father, we thank you that you desire her heart that she can go to church and attend with her husband, Father God. And we thank you that she can do that, Father, and, and enjoy services with believers. And we thank you, Father God, that she be able to do that next Sunday. What she wants to do. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. Father God. Yes. Great on Barahasha. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We lift up, we lift up Natalie to you in the name of Jesus, Father. We pray, God, that during this season there will be many blind eyes that will be opened in many ways, Father. We pray that people who have been blinded by the world system and by demonic influences, Father, would suddenly discover what it is that's wrong and what it is that's wrong with the systems that they're listening to and what it is that's wrong with the. The, with the, the agenda, God, and the, 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 the way of the world, Lord. Yeah, there's a way that seems right to a man, Lord. And I pray for Natalie to, say, to see and understand, Father, the depths behind Satan's strategies and understand, Lord, the ways that in which the Spirit works and how people function in relation to the Spirit, Father. I pray, God, that you would give her a dream, a sudden insight, a glimpse into where she's at and what is really happening, Father. I pray the light would break through in that situation, Father. We lift her up, Father, and we pray, God, for her life and plead for it, Father, that you save her, God. Save her, God, from suicide. Save her from, from negative thoughts, Lord. We, we, just, we, we pray there would be a, an opening in the end. And, and the issues that are around her, Lord, that they would, they would, I, I pray that the circumstances would be arranged in a way that would, that would just make sense to her, Father. Yes. I pray you reveal yourself to her, God, in a new way, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Taishan for salvation in the name of Jesus. We pray that you lift up the entire family, Lord, for the, 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 the 
the witness of God to spread throughout uh, uh, Brother uh, Alvin's family, yes. Father. We pray, yes. God, for a yes. place of light and glory, yes. God. Yes. To be a place of your presence, yes. God, daily. Yes. But I pray, God, Lord, I pray for his extended family as well, Lord. We pray that all of them, all of them would come to know you, God. We pray the eyes of their hearts to be open. And I pray this for uh, Natalie as well. Yes. Lord, we pray that the eyes and, and for uh, Jenny's sister as well, Trish. Pray the eyes of their heart would be open. They may know the hope to which you call them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. And the incomparable, great power, God, for those who believe, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you. Father God, I pray for those in service as rest of them yes. by Leo and Alvin tonight, and I pray that they understand that we fight not to get flesh and blood, but get the powers, the principalities, the brutal darkness, spiritual weakness, and I pray their commitment to the military, and it's spiritual warfare, not, not physical warfare. Now, thank you for their commitment for service, and they're different yes. kind of soldiers. They're in the army of God, first and foremost, yes. Yes. They, yes. they represent Christianity to those, to a military that's trying to change and be worldly and uh, just reflect society, which is not a real reflection, but an uh, exacerbation of what it is. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the military, and we thank you for the two represented here today, that, that you use them and use them and show them that the way. And Lord, I, I pray no discouragement on them, but Lord, that they know that they're anointed by you to do yes. what they're going to do. Yes. And that we thank you, Lord, for, thank you, for Lord. that they serve. He the greatest among you, let him serve. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. So thank you, Lord, for these two here tonight. In, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. That's they're nothing to you. They are nothing to you. And you laugh at your enemies, Lord. You are still enthroned, Lord God. You are still sovereign, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yolanda, call me back. Y'all continue to pray. Father, we pray for alliances, for unity within the body. We pray for humility and grace, Lord, to consider one another better than ourselves, Lord. Yes, we just thank God. you, Father, for uh, stirring up, Lord, so many people all around this area, God, to come together to love you, to love you, and to love you some more. Father, I pray you transport us to your time frame all throughout the week so that we live not under the burden of Egypt, but we live under the atmosphere of heaven, Father. Yes. Transported in glory and being a transport and yes. just being a, a portal of your glory, God. I, I speak open gates right now, God. The Bible yes. says Ooh. open up those heavenly gates, Father. And I speak open gates over our lives, over the yes. spirit within yes. us, God. You say you're like rivers of living water flowing out of our spirit, God. And I just pray and we open up those gates in the name of Jesus. That the world can take a drink of your grace. That the world can see your glory, God, and be converted. They can see who you truly are and you for who you truly are.
Mm. I think it's going to be okay. Mm. He loves her more than you do. He loves her more than you do. And you're asking, I know you love her a lot, but he loves her more than you do. Mm. She'll be okay. Lord, we pray for the Wallace family as well, for the same thing for their children, Lord, that they would just grow in knowledge and the wisdom and fear the Lord, God. I pray that they would develop so well. Father, we pray for their schooling as well, Father, that they would grow in, in, in understanding of you deep inside, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're blessing that family, Father. I pray for Adrian, Aaron, Aaron Gideon, and the rest of the kids, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You call them out by name and say, you've got your finger on them. You've got purposes for their lives that are going to open up wide, and that family is going to be a blessing to this nation, as well as just the state and their local areas. Father, I speak future and destiny into their lives, Father. They're going to be world changers. They're going to they're going to know the, the Father. They are going to know their identity. They are going to understand their place, God, in this world as being carriers of your kingdom, God, into the world. They're going to make a difference in their in their state and even in their nation, Father. I pray them to be world changers and world shakers. This family is going to be sent out, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let me pray for your children too, Jeremy. Lord, we pray for Jeremy's children as well. Lord, we pray what a blessing it is to know this family and this precious, the, all the precious children, Lord, like jewels, like arrows that they're sent out, God. Yes. Yes. We pray for their lives, God, for their futures to be protected, to be guided. To be yeah. through, so that they do not take the wrong turn at any step, Lord. I pray, Father, for wisdom and, and grace and in, in, their, in their hearts to grow and to allow them to become strong in the faith. Be strong in the Lord, Lord. I pray every, every, every plan that you have for their life would succeed and that Jeremy yes. and, and Chrissy would be able to to, to uh, raise up and to to, to hand pick those plants, those things that you've planted in their lives, and to water them and to allow them to grow, Father. And I just pray for full maturity and ex excellent um, uh, results for every one of his children. We pray for the newborn as well. Yes, Father, we pray that this child would be anointed by God, like Ben John the Baptist, even while he's in the womb, that he would have the calling on his life. Yes. And Father, we speak uh, great plans for him, Lord, that yes. he's going to be a kingdom warrior, God, and a, a shaker of, also a shaker of his environment, Father, a giant yes. in the kingdom. Jesus. Father, we speak that Jesus. his life Jesus. is going to be a light to those around him, Father. And we believe, God, that you're not only providing for him and his family, but that you're doing abundantly above what you can add, what we can ask or imagine for him, for this family, for this ministry, Father. We speak into that. We speak seeds into this ministry, Father. That you'd plant and and, and the people who uh, that you would raise up people to support in every way, God. And we thank you for that. that that's already happening, Father. Thank you for thank answering you, that. You are our supply and you are our need. You are a need supplier abundantly above what we can ask or imagine. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just spoke with. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, spoke with uh, Yolanda, and she's doing good. Back pain, possibly. Don't want to say broken leg, but possibly. Um, um, she's in good spirits. The Lord had me have a word for her. He told me to call her. That's why I kept stepping out. And uh, she called me back and stepped out again. And I had a word for her, and she said the Lord just told her the exact same thing. Wow. So, um, so God's in this. Like, did he cause her to get in the car? No, but he's going to use it for his good. So. Uh, and cause all things to work together for good. That's right. 
So, but nice. it was instant confirmation. She's right up the road. I asked her if she could have visitors. She said she doesn't know yet. Tony's on his way. He's getting off work and he's on the way. So she's not by herself. And they're, I heard the, them fussing over her. So in a, in a good way, I mean, like they're yeah. like, are you comfortable? Is there anything we can do to relieve your pain in the background? So I, I'm believing she's good. Yeah. Yes. And yes. we're not going to get into worry or fear. So uh, she's good, and and it's it's going to be for God's glory. Yeah. I know that sounds to the to the natural mind that sounds kind of morbid, but it's not. No, you know why the enemy was after her is because she's got this. That's, that's right. Exactly that's exactly what I, what I said. Yeah. The enemy meant for evil. Her. That was the, the enemy meant for was, God to <laughs> take it and glorify. That was part of the word that I had for her. Instead of calling all nines, we need to. Called seven seven seven, yes. which is the area code to heaven. That's mm-hmm. right. Amen. Yeah, she's got this event Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We gonna get her in a wheelchair if nothing else, and stroll her up in there. That's the same that's thing it. I said to her. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Man, if she presses through something like that, that's gonna be a great testimony. Y'all are saying about a third of what I I said to her. Yes. So that's yes. the Holy Spirit confirmation, right. confirming right. what right. the Lord already told her. Confirmation of the confirmation of the confirmation. Yeah. So, when we were when we were worshiping, that was well. When when you had first mentioned that Yolanda had sister Yolanda had gotten in the car accident, I, I saw in my mind that she was going to be able to be in contact with people that God was going to use those as opportunities for her to minister. So it yes. just was the first actual thought. So I know, yes. I yes. she will. Yeah, I just told her not to focus on the pain and that God's got yes. witnessing opportunities. Yes. You know. All right. Well, whoo, glory. Well, it's my privilege and honor to introduce our speaker tonight. Uh, I've known him for just a couple months, but it's my, I mean, it, uh, God is just definitely a God thing, kingdom connection. And the Lord uh, told me, I was hoping some of y'all's people would come, but they can watch it online later. Yes. Just because the Lord told me to do this, he told me to confirm you're an up-and-coming apostle. And, and so, uh, the, I mean, it's just, it's just awesome what God's doing because, Lord, yeah. you know, he's really, it's, it, so it's not, it's not every small church is obviously small because it's anointed. Mm-hmm. Some of them are smaller because they're dead and dry, right. you know, religion, yep. you know, but, but in this case, God is doing something new with home churches and smaller apostolic churches that are getting back to the real roots. Right. Yes. Um, about the way, like, similar to the church in the book of Acts, you know, because that's, God never stopped with the book of Acts. We're a continuation of the book of Acts. And, um, you know, one thing he did warn me about a couple of years ago, and somebody, I think y'all had brought it up the other day, or we were, uh, he said, when it's, it's actually his grace that his greater glory hasn't touched down yet. And I've shared this before. But because we're going to have Ananias and Sapphira's, mm-hmm. people, you can't lie. You can't even lie when when the presence of God is Amen. that thick. Oh, in in the, yeah. you know, so the, it's so it's it's just going to be the glory of God. Where, but but we're not there yet because yes. we're not ready yet. Right. You know, sense. we're not ready for it. Some of us more so than others, but we're just not ready for that greater glory yet uh he's preparing his bride Amen. you know which we are but um let's let's give it up for yeah. pastor or should i say apostle kyle have a seat bro thank you and you don't have to talk directly into the mic it's, it picks up awesome and you had some scriptures i can do all that for you too yeah you mind if I uh, just leave it right there? Oh, that would be yeah. perfect. You sure? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just going to stick this right there. Okay. Well, thank you all for having me. Thank you for asking me. Um, <clears throat> as Pastor Jeremy was saying, Apostle Jeremy, uh, we have met just recently, a couple months, um, and it's just been amazing. It's been amazing, this this connection, and not just with Jeremy, but everyone here. Uh, we know that it's definitely God, and there are times my wife and I have just struggled because it's 
it's like when we want to connect to people and we seek people who love the Lord and it was just so hard to find people who were who were serious about their relationship with the Lord right we we would try to make these connections and it would just fall apart because they just didn't want to give the time that God deserves so you know we uh, sometimes we just get down like I, is there anyone else out there you know the last couple we knew uh, that were like that was six or seven years ago six or seven years ago and that was before Nina and I went to India and then we just lost connection with them I think now they're actually in I don't know where they are Nina do you know where Stephen and Charity is um, they're in South Africa South Africa so after we came back they Went in there and living, forever. yep, okay. living in South Africa, and even, uh, even through their child having a near death experience. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. They almost uh, apparently the the care over there, medical care. Was yeah, it's not too. Yeah, and I believe they alternated Tylenol and something the else. Overdosed on Tylenol, basically. Oh. So it was yeah. She didn't have. I don't know if she didn't have access to. She was having toothache or something, and it ended up turning south really bad. Mm. Solomon that told us about it. That's oh, when we got a car, right? Yeah. When we get in a car. Right. Anyway, but yeah, like I'm saying, it's just been a long time. It's been a long time, so this has been very good, very refreshing for us mm-hmm. to find uh, some people that just love the Lord and are on fire and are seeking. You know, I tell this to the congregation all the time that we know that, uh, you know, salvation is free, right? What Jesus did on the cross is free for all. But for to get his anointing, that's going to cost right to receive the anointing we're going to have to wake up in the night when the lord tells us to get up and pray for our families pray for our kids pray for our wives you know, do all these things and uh, so it's it's really been very good for us it's just god is so good to us so we're grateful to be here uh, you said the scripture earlier i'm going to be in ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 all right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And that is, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to pray real quick. God, we thank you so much for this time, for this fellowship, uh, coming together and just worshiping you and honoring you, and loving you, God, and lifting you up. God, I pray for this word. I pray that you will move me out of the way, God, and you will flow through me, Lord. Allow this word to uh, be just go through us and and, and plant it in us, God, and churn the soil of our hearts. We thank you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I titled this Becoming a Spiritual Sniper. I'm going to talk a little about that. This morning, I talked more of the generalization of what it means, what it looks like to be a good soldier in the army of God. Uh, now I'm going to dive into you know, kind of becoming a spiritual sniper. But before I do that, I just want to kind of break down the scripture. This is, uh, I really love this scripture. And, you know, it's, Paul describes for us Satan's most effective and common arsenal is right here, right? And I believe that it, Paul's actually showing us some of the hierarchy of Satan's kingdom right here. Uh, you know, with the principalities and then the powers and then the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness. So I looked, I got into the Hebrew and the Greek and I looked up principalities and the simple term means leaders, Right, but if you dive into it more, you see that it's it means first or beginning cornerstone. Right, so these principalities, I believe, are speaking of the original third of the angels that fell with Satan. So that's the principalities here. All right, Satan's demons. All right, and then I looked up powers. All right, we and that that's pretty much what it is. It simply means people in authority, people in authority, the rulers, the governments. Uh, You know, Satan has been at this a long time. We know that. He's been at this a long time, and he has many wicked wicked rulers. Mm -hmm. He he, he has uh, gotten his his claws in different nations, right, and people and rulers and authorities. And all of these are at his disposal, at his disposal. And I think that word is perfect, right, disposal, because that's exactly what Satan's going to do when he's done with them. He's going to dispose of them. He's just going to toss them away. 
So I looked, uh, that was powers, I looked into rulers, all right, and rulers is, uh, it, it meant ruler of the world, prince of this age. Mm -hmm. So we know what, who that is, right? Ruler of the world, prince of this age. And, and, you know, Satan has given some of his demons rule over different parts of the darkness, right? right? That's, that's speaking of the hierarchy that we're talking about. Uh, and also, I looked into spiritual host of wickedness. And this simply refers to the corrupted spirits at Satan's disposal. Mm -hmm. right? And all of this, all of that what we just discussed is, is powered and under the control of Satan. Under the control of Satan. So, spiritual snipers. I really like doing this, you know, because I'm a veteran and I was an infantryman. Uh, recon and so I like to, to relate you know because it's a lot of it that is relatable we are in the army of the Lord yeah. we are at war yeah. a spiritual war that we are in and I was discussing this earlier at church and so many of our brothers and sisters just either don't understand we're at war or they believe we're at war but they don't have to do anything in that battle Right? They don't have to do something for that battle. They're just believing that God is taking care of it. All they got to do is show up to church an hour a week, and they are good to go. And we know that is not it. So before I dive into the spiritual sniper, I kind of want to talk about just snipers real quick. I'm sure y'all might know some about it, um, but for the others, about 1%, 1% of Americans right now are in the military. Just 1%. And then of that very small 1%, about 40% of that will not be around combat. 60% um, could potentially see combat. So you're removing about 40% um, that have great jobs that are doing something that's important that's just not at combat. Um, so this, out of the 60% that, is possi that will possibly see combat, 10 to 20 percent of that are actually deployed into a zone a combat zone combat premise so and, and a lot of that is in a, a supporting role so that's like somewhere between seven to ten percent will actually see combat all right so that is a very small number of people who see combat and just think about how many of that small percent are actually snipers yes. right this is a, a sniper is a very elite elite group of, of soldiers and just some quick math that I did real quick so one let's just say the population is 10,000 one percent of that is a hundred soldiers 40 of those will never see combat that leaves 60 soldiers of those 60 only 10 to 20 percent will be deployed to a combat zone at least 12 12 soldiers seven of those soldiers will be in a supporting role so five or those are kicking indoors and doing things like that. Of those five, one will be a sniper. So out of 10,000, one person is a sniper. That is what we call elite. That, that is very elite. Um, Not a dime a dozen. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So... You know, and I've heard a lot of things from civilians uh, that, that, you know, they when they talk about snipers, they'll say, uh, you know, all they have to do is just learn how to shoot. Right. <laughs> or, or, or all they have to do is just be able to sit still and then, you know, pull the trigger. And that is so wrong. That is so wrong. It's crazy, you know, because no two environments are the same. And my military people know this. Everyone knows this. No two environments are the same. No two rifles are the same. No two situations are the same. Mm -hmm. Everything will be different. And it can change in a, in a flash. Yeah. It can change in a flash. And um, just speaking on some qualifications and some skills that snipers have to have, hand-eye combat has to be superior. Mm -hmm. It has to be really good. Limitless patience. <laughs> limitless patience. Yes, <laughs> limitless patience. And their concentration <laughs> has to be super intense. So just to describe, um, so they, they'll go in usually at night before dawn, and they will find their spot with their, with their spotter, 
And usually, if it's a, a scout, it, the scout team, they'll go with four, but sometimes it's just two. And they'll get into their spot, and sometimes their night vision is not working as great because the moon's not out, and they might lay in a fire ant bed. Wow. Yep, and you know they're they're you know taught to make sure everything is sealed up so nothing can get in, but you can't stop ants. Yeah. So they're in a situation where they can't move. They got ants crawling up their legs, biting oh. them. So, you know, they can't just jump up and go around crazy, you know, right. Yep. They don't want to give away their position. So they have to very strategically try to figure out how to get rid of those. <laughs> the best way to do it that I found was to have your spotter or someone just pour water on you. That's the best way to do it. Just try to get water on there. So, but anyway, limitless patience absorb large amounts of data, large amounts of data and use that data accurately under extreme stress under extreme stress they need to plan meticulously get in do their job get out they need to be physically fit and brave capable of intense as i was saying concentration and then some things that they can practice land navigation shooting skills stalking and range estimation so snipers as i was saying are elite plain and simple so let's transition that to a spiritual sniper I believe spiritual snipers are just as elite. Not in the elite way that there's only one of them per se, but I believe that the Lord can raise up anyone who is truly seeking Him wholeheartedly. And I know there are also seasons. God may call someone to do this for a season and have them do something else. Right? So let's uh, just want to take a look at a few things. On a spiritual sniper. So a spiritual sniper, this is my first one, will be proficient at collecting data and using it to better future engagements. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of y'all heard, but snipers carry a book with them. And the book is called Their Dope. It's their data on previous engagements. So they collect their, uh, uh, you know, their windage. They'll collect temperatures and everything to, to help them for their future engagements. So they have this device or this book, and they have all this information, and they are able to use this data quickly to, to help them you know, range a target and to do this. And I think... Um, that a spiritual sniper is also able to do this in the fact that they can listen to different pastors and preachers and evangelists and they can take what is necessary of that right they can take what is necessary they get rid of the fluff and the bloat and they will add that to their arsenal a spiritual sniper is very good at doing this they they can they can see right when a pastor is adding stuff as fluff and when this is from the Holy Spirit, right? And they're able to just cut that out and keep the good. So that's the first one. The second is they, can, they will be proficient at stealth. Proficient at stealth. A spiritual sniper will be able to move undetected, right? Will be able to move undetected while listening to the Lord and collecting the information. Be an expert shot. They are precise with communicating a word from the Lord to whomever the Lord shows them, right? They are accurate, accurate with the word of God and ready to deliver the truth. Yes, exactly. Expert shot. And, and to further that, the next one is that they abide by the creed, one shot, one kill. And what I mean by that is they are able to go straight to the heart of the matter, straight to the heart. They cut through all of it and go straight to the heart. Now, 90% of the time, a spiritual sniper is a long-range weapon. But sometimes, they're going to have face-to-face -face interactions. And, you know, a spiritual sniper has done lots of battles in their prayer closet, in their kitchens, walking back and forth in the middle of the night, and things like that but when they come face to face they are not ambiguous with their words it is straight 
and it is accurate and is exactly what the Lord tells them. They don't add, they don't take away, and it's that one shot, one kill. And I've got an example of this that Nina shared with y'all on Friday. But So <clears throat> the Lord gave Nina one word, one word to tell her pastor at the time, and that one word was recognize. Yeah, and, and so, and that was a, a face-to-face, you know, that wasn't over the phone, that wasn't a prayer, that wasn't anything. She, the Lord specifically told her to go tell him to recognize. Mm. And, you know, she eventually did it because the Holy Spirit yeah. kept, you know, yep. yep. Oh, yeah, that's what <laughs> like you said, water, like a like water drop. Scripture. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, recognize, recognize, <laughs> recognize. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually said it like a little child was like, Pastor Bruce, I don't know why, but the Lord is just telling me to just share this, just to say this, recognize. Yep, and, and he one word broke the dam. Yep, uh, broke it all. I mean, he he tried word. to play it off, but then that so ended up right. causing him to step down, wow. yeah, leave the church. Of the church, and I had no idea of any of their history, what was going on in their family. There was no. God just used a simple vessel to deliver a one word, and it was the one word that cut to the heart. And wow. I, next thing I know, I see him and his wife in the corner, and she's just, burr, 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 and they're just, burr, burr, burr. but his first response. <laughs> nice squirrels. Yeah. Yeah, they turn to squirrels. <laughs> his first response was, well, maybe you better recognize. Maybe he's telling you to recognize. And I was like, so, you know, in hindsight, you're like, oh, pride immediately. Yeah. You know, it was, it was met with pride, but. I was just like a kid loving on the Lord, and I, I didn't don't have even any know idea. what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, recognize that you have a. I mean, I don't know. Recognize yourself in the mirror. <laughs> yep. So that the Lord used Nina as a spiritual sniper right there. That was a perfect yeah. example of that. Right. So next, a uh, spiritual sniper will be a protector. <gasps> this is a good one. Now they will be able to recognize enemy spiritual snipers. And I'm telling you that, and, I, and I've told the, you know, the oak this many times, our enemy is not relaxing. No, our enemy no. is not taking vacations or taking sabbaticals or breaks <laughs> or all of this stuff that we see pastors doing now and mm-hmm. all of these things. They are, they are doing their occult stuff and they are praying yeah. to Satan and they are infiltrating the yeah. church. Right. They are doing these uh-huh. things, right? Uh-huh. So a spiritual sniper will be a protector. They will know, they will recognize an enemy sniper. They will know their tactics, right? And, and they will help those around them to overcome such attacks. Amen. So a spiritual sniper will be a protector. Yeah. A spiritual sniper will be proficient in their weapon will be proficient in their weapon and what's the weapon we know what our weapon is right right the the scripture tells us yes the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that is the weapon a spiritual sniper will be proficient in their weapon it's like an extension of their arm they will devour the word every chance they get committing yeah yeah jump in Mm-hmm. And the morning show. Yeah. Let's review these movies and whether you should go see yes. them. Yes. And, mm. and I'm like, come on. I support that, Jim. Any bit of it. That's that's. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and, and it's like, it's the weekend. Take it, relax, and take it easy. Mm-hmm. They don't say anything about building your spiritual man at all. It's no. just like, it's all feel good. And Only the songs. Relax. The and songs. And, and what can we get away with? Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yep. What sin, what, can we just look at the tree? We yeah. don't need to eat it. Mm, that's good, <laughs> that's yeah. Right. Well, I've gotten to wear even some of the songs we got to skip. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't care if she says she's a Christian. Dolly Parton ain't a Christian. That's what I said too. I <laughs> totally agree with she, you. She, she flat out for her, like her birthday last year, or for her husband's birthday, she posed in her same Playboy outfit that she did. Yeah, you're gonna. Be I'm like, no. Photos. And yeah. Like that well, thing. well, and then you've got, and I'll just say the name. I normally don't say names, but Lauren Daigle. We saw the video. It wasn't just hearsay. She said, I'm not a Christian artist. Yeah. I'm just an artist. Mm-hmm. Like, every time she comes on the radio, I we can't. switch it. Yep. Oh, yeah. We can't. Yeah, yeah Lauren, she's. I don't listen to Lauren Daigle either. 
No, nope. I'm like, she's, you have so many opportunities. You have so much of a reach, and you can't say the name of Jesus. She's gotten into new age mm. stuff, and you can tell by the way she acts yeah. and talks. Yeah. She and... looks like a gypsy. Yeah. <laughs> and she's hard to Oh, no, no, you're fine. I mean, because I, well, I agree with you. I mean, there's stuff that comes mm -hmm. on constantly. Patrick, last year, before he did, he was telling us that he heard back when like COVID started, and one of the guys was ranting about how um, he said he was on there about for pro Black Lives Matter, and he was just ranting against people who are against it. And this is a person who's in charge of a Christian radio station, get on just wow. blasting people. And he's like, I mean, that's just not, that's yeah. not biblical. Yeah. That's yeah. not okay. The Lord, yeah. the Lord showed me it was straight demonic. It, it's, that's anything that can create division within the body of Christ, especially. Yeah. I know that that, because I didn't think that any of this stuff would ever divide our churches. Mm -hmm. And look at, you know, everywhere from mandates to, to organizations that you're like. But it's because. How did Christians get entangled in yeah. these ideologies and these it's things because that we're the not Lord, supposed to. The Lord's splitting. He did, that's it's what I rift. thought. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a rift. It's, it's the sheep from the goats yep. and the wheat from the chaff. Mm -hmm. Now, I really want to finish. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Come yeah, on. Let's do it. So yeah. We normally do the open forum kind of teaching. Yeah. No, that's. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I mean, you saw it to this morning. I it's, mean, I let, you know. I, it's, so, it's so different. It, there's times where he's like, you know, I, I, it's kind of neat. It's kind of different that people uh, just, you know, want to engage. Mm -hmm. They're not asleep, right? <laughs> That's it. I, see, that, I, I, when I went to, I don't know if you want to call it a seminary, but I did the brief, uh, the Bible college. It yeah. was my old youth pastor, and he loved me. I was like his favorite student because I would, debate like right. hey, let's let's figure out what this means mm -hmm. and he said, you're the only one that does that I'm yeah. like, i hope i'm not being disruptive he goes no, no i yep. worry about everybody else <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep oh. yep but we're just seek knowledge and and you know with the right what's... intentions right yeah. yeah and that's what you know i try to tell bash all the time i'm like it's good to have worldly knowledge too though i'm like but you need to have godly knowledge but it's good to have that knowledge too, because then when you come across people like atheists who know the Bible well, but they twist it, yep. you can actually then, in a, not I'm gonna say not in an argument, but in a debate, you mm -hmm. can debate with people yes. then like that, and you can explain why, you can show them well this is I see where you're coming from, but this is what it means, you know, yes. yeah. and so it really it's. it's huh? Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics. Oh, it's like gosh. you just have to say one word to some of these people. Hermeneutics. Well, let's take scripture mm -hmm. and weigh scripture against scripture. And if, some, if there's something that happened yeah. in scripture, it interprets scripture. So it's like scripture interprets scripture. Context. Yes. Get into the mind of the prophet that, you know, the prophet and the priest and the disciple. Huh? And, and, that, and keeping it first in the time period and who the letter or who the book is yeah. written to or who the information is written to. Well, but they will cherry pick and. Yeah, well, and then this you. morning, the, the speaker, he was talking about how. People will constantly, they'll read a scripture and then they could take it out of context, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's because you're not looking at the whole right. yeah. let's, context. Let's, yeah. reel, Sorry. let's reel back in. And Sorry. <laughs> people uh, yeah. Where was I? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, we can talk after. <laughs> uh, so the last Kill word, the B, no, nope, that was like four ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't that many ago. Sword uh, spirit, yes, proficient in your weapon. Proficient, Anger. a spiritual sign would be proficient in their weapon. And devouring the word, but more so they will also know which word to use at which time. Uh -oh. okay. Which word to use at which time, yes. It works against the extroverts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last one I got for y'all. Be proficient in overwatch duties. And overwatch duties. Now I talked about being a protector, but this is more so for watching over a congregation, watching over a congregation, watching over a, a, a large family, right? Watching over even uh, territory, neighborhoods, things like this. Looking for the enemy trying to infiltrate because they are trying to infiltrate. That is that is a, a fact. They will try to infiltrate your, your church. Your, your neighborhood, even your family, 
Yes, they will try to infiltrate. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. right? Members of the occult train. They right. get together on, on their whatever days they do it. I know it's a lot, actually. Yeah. And, and they train and they prepare. They try. They, they, they even fast. Yes, yes. they even they fast. Everything. They will get together and they will go shopping to try to get church clothes. And they will try to, uh, they will like do a... Uh, like a one-on-one -on -one where they're trying to act like a church per like someone yeah. a christian right someone who can fit into the church yeah. yeah so they can sneak in and they and then and then when they're in they will do their spells they will leave cursed items they will do all of these things and yep yep you know them by the fruit and and they figured out they know to go after the lukewarm christian they know this they know how to choose which Christian, yes, to pick them off, to see which ones that they can, they can separate, they can pull off, and then they can do what they want to, too. And you know what I just thought about was the fact that they can get, they can find the ones in the church that they know can do the most damage. So, mm -hmm. yep. like the lukewarm, you know, they, if it's sister so and so is known for gossip, then they know, hey, I know she's she's good at gossip, so I'm gonna go get in her ear. Yes. And yeah. You know it. She split the whole church in. Yeah. That's also yeah. the Jezebel yeah. spirit. Jezebel. Yeah, Jezebel spirit does and that. And with the objects, like you're saying, we've we've been given dream catchers. Mm -hmm. like, the girls no with the yeah. dream catchers yeah. on the back of the gloves. For, yeah. For Disney's Frozen with dream cat, and we're like, those are going in the burn pile. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're gonna set them on fire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> set them on fire. Kill it with fire. No. Sometimes we need to. Yeah. Sometimes we need to burn it. Talking about the supernatural and how you know it defies your intellect and how we. What was that you were saying about the? You remember talking about that? I think it was just yesterday. Or about so. what? Talking about how uh, human the human mind is so focused on the natural that when the things of God, the supernatural things of God that He's equipped us with, or how, or how He moves in the Spirit and how He's not bound by our ways. You know, the yeah. spirit realm is just so much greater and more diverse. And, and for us to limit him to say, no, you can't heal that person that way. You know, that's not the way that should look. You know, because looking going? back on some of the greats of, you know, like Smith Wigglesworth. I mean, y'all, he did some really banana stuff. But but his writings and it, it, to me to this day, it just still ministers to me. And, and there's proof in the, you know. nothing else for you. Proof is in the clay. Yeah. So that, those were, I don't know, I think that was six. It might have been seven, I'm not sure. Um, well, there's, there's actually, you know, the Lord's given me a lot, but those, those ones that I spoke of tonight, I believe those are the, the very beginning stages. Those are the ones that you'll see the Lord cultivating in you. If he's calling you to be a spiritual sniper, right? he, you'll start seeing these things. And you might even, uh, the Lord has, may have even given them to you. These might be some strengths that you already have. Right, so um, I just urge you, all of you, if, if the Lord's calling you to do this, it is for a, a perfect reason, and uh, make sure that you pursue that because this is something that is super elite, and spiritual snipers are force multipliers. Mm. They are force multipliers, and, it, and it's a, a great, a great uh, thing to have in, in our arsenal, right, together. Um, so... That was the spiritual sniper stuff I have, and I uh, also want to talk about my dream. <laughs> talk about my dream that I had. So this was two weeks ago now. Yeah. Two weeks ago now. Uh, so the dream was in a grocery store. Started in a grocery store. I wasn't on the aisles. I didn't put any of the stuff in the buggy. I didn't check out uh the dream started with me leaving the checkout leaving the checkout in a grocery store i had a buggy and the buggy was overflowing with groceries all right so i'll just stop there and you know the grocery store is is representing the abundance of the lord right yeah. what god and what he has and what he's given right i didn't pay for anything like you know, because the Lord is filling. And this buggy is not mine. When you go to a grocery store, you don't bring your buggy, right? The buggy belongs to the grocery store. So that God is giving us the vehicle. Yes. 
Yeah. Right? He is pouring these things in and giving us the vehicle to move this. So, you mean the, the is that a cart? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, cart. Was, you, 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 it's a shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shopping cart. Shopping cart. Who are not southern. Yeah. Yeah. Buggy is a vehicle. I got think like a dune buggy. Yeah. Which is what we're going to be cruising. Yeah. Like a horse cart. We're getting off. All right. Excellent. Shopping cart. Yeah. 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 All right. Shopping cart. Okay. Um. So I took the cart and I pushed it to six other people. Six other people. So that with me, that's seven. Seven people. Six. I I went up to. So that's seven. All right, the number of seven, we know what the number of seven, seven is a perfect number. It's God's number. Uh, the first thing that the Holy Spirit, well, many things he brought, but, you know, the sevenfold, <clears throat> sorry, uh, sevenfold spirit, yeah. I got something, do I have a, can you give me water? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, sevenfold spirit, right, and uh, so seven of us, and yeah, yeah I'm going to get into that. We all look the same. There was no individuality in the seven. No individuality. I didn't see any faces, so everything was blurred. All of us looked the same, and that clearly told me that there was n no individuality in it. We, we were a team. We were uh, a solid thing together, right? We were all together in this, and uh, so we were standing there, and we were at the exit, but we couldn't leave. All right, we could not leave because a, a person who worked at the store came up to us and they said, you can't leave until you figure it out. Well, figure what out, right? We don't know. We figure. Yeah, so the, the, thank you so much. <clears throat> not at all. So the, the worker told us you can't leave until you figure it out. And all of us are sitting there with our carts. Our carts are overflowing with stuff. Every one, every, every seven carts, seven people overflowing with things. And so, you know, we're, we're all together still, but we're thinking on this. Figure, figure it out, figure it out. So while we're still in a circle, everyone starts kind of uh, trying to figure it out, doing their own thing. You know, we're, we're not really paying attention to each other. I mean, we're still working together. Um, but... One thing that I knew, the you know, the Holy Spirit revealed to me was Jeremy was to my left. That was the only person I knew in, in the group. So that's two out of the five, me and Jeremy. I knew that. And Jeremy and I were doing this kind of at the same time. We both pulled our receipts out of our pocket. And when we unfolded it, it was a long receipt. Both of us had super long receipts. Oh, CVS. Yes. 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 It must have oh, been at CVS. Yes. <laughs> So we had these super long receipts and, you know, we were looking at them uh, and, you know, receipts, what are receipts, right? They, they show you what's they been paid for, right? Purchased. They show you what's been paid for, proof of what's purchased. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, Jeremy got this too. And, uh, you know, that's, that's because these seven have paid the cost, right? Mm -hmm. Have paid the cost to, to, you know, for, to receive this anointing to receive what what the Lord is bringing to this and and Jeremy and I take this receipt and we wrap it around our heads backwards and pull it up to our ears we know not to put it this way because the receipt will cover yourself. yes it will blind us so we take this receipt and we wrap it around our our ears and we pull it really close and once we get it super close we can hear a still small voice and when I do this, Jeremy to my left goes, there it is. Oh. And I say, yep, I hear him too. And so this voice, you know, and, and I'd pull it off and it'd go away. And then I'd bring it back in and there it was. It's still small, a gentle whisper. Right? And there were no uh, words that we understood, but I knew that the voice was loving, but was commanding, was giving direction. I knew that for a fact. That was giving direction. So when we heard this and we figured this out we let the other five know they did that with their receipts they heard and then the person at the this the exit said y'all can leave now oh my goodness. So and so we left and went out into the world and that was the dream and i woke up and 
uh, there was tears in my eyes, and I just knew it was from the Lord. And I woke up, <laughs> was writing it all down. I'm telling y'all, there was this is a dream from God, real. So yeah, that's. Um, Your wife told on you too to Chrissy because we talk sometimes, mm. and she said, uh, you know, Kyle never takes anyone quickly and the, yes. like you took to your husband they were talking like yes you, like and I, is, that touched me man like yeah. it really did yes. like that yeah you know awesome. yeah you know we've we've you know i the thing is uh, and i told y'all this the other day um and i i would like if you um to share your dream too oh, um, oh yeah um, crazy get you on camera in a second um, yeah and uh and, well, first Thank you for wow. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. First things first. Um, whew, glory. I just thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. really feel like we're in a season. He's, this is why we've come get together so quickly because he's going to be moving yes. things very quickly. Yeah. With how quickly things are happening in the world mm -hmm. so i think i really think it's it's about to be there's not much time left yeah, yeah. It, it's it really things and, are going to start coming for fear fast. or yeah, we need to be ready yes it's because so. god doesn't rush but god does move quickly yeah yes. he says behold i'm coming Go get but, 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 quickly but, 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 speedily with urgency yes. yeah so his plans are not delayed they are they're just the right time. That's now, right. Amen. what lukewarm Christians say, and I know it's been said before, and I'm not a date setter, but it's just not much time. I, told, I think that's that's all, the Bible says you will not know the, the day or time, but you will know the season. You will and know I think that we season. all, every, every remnant Christian, I don't even maybe need to use that term, but I'm just saying everybody who is on fire for God yeah. um, that I've encountered, and I'm sure that you've all encountered, you are, we're all getting that same sense. Oh like, God. we know yeah. this is next level. Yeah. We know this is way beyond yeah. anything that we felt in our spirit before. We feel that urgency, and it's because the See, Lord doesn't do anything without first no, you just, tell just, them just thank running you. it by his people, it. confirming it to his people. Yeah, well, you know, one thing that I didn't, and this is actually extremely important for the dream, oh, good. was that the seven people represented seven ministries seven ministries in the local area and that the lord is leading these seven ministries to do a new thing okay. to do something within this maybe just starting with the local community into the broader yeah. to broader community than to the u.s you know right so the seven spark. ministries i know of two Amen. and I, I i know the lord's going to reveal to jeremy and i the other five uh, and we'll, you know, bring them in and listen to the Lord and whatever He has us do. Oh man! We're gonna take things slow, right? Mm -hmm. and, and unless the Lord says otherwise, but we're just gonna use general wisdom and take things. You both need to get off. You know, um, but what you got, bud? The five awesome people might be the five awesome. Get off if you want. Yeah, that's. Get off. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's Good what, job. Yeah. That's <laughs> what, that's <laughs> what, that's <laughs> what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, can you yes. take the floor? Oh, and thank you, Kyle. Okay. Yes. Thank you, yes. Kyle. Hey, hey, we got. Maybe I'll take my Bible away <laughs> now. Yeah. Sit up. Sit up. Hey, Kyle. No, not you. Is your name Nina? <gasps> oh, can I hold you? Because you might feel better. <laughs> you're not. You're not on camera right your now. Your name's Nina. Your name's Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> she just giggled. She just giggled about that. Okay. Okay. Ooh, I like that book. Revelation repeat unveiled. Okay, so I don't know what I should say first. Your dream? Yeah, just the dream. Okay, I'm weirded out right now. Um, <laughs> you're in the hot seat. In the hot, that's what it is. Oh. So essentially, the, the when was that that I had that dream? Was it maybe it was, not even a week ago? Was it yeah, a week it was ago? Four days after it was, yeah, it was a yeah, like about four yeah. days after his dream. Mm -hmm. um, I put it in the I put it to the it was kind of in the back of my mind. I wasn't really prioritizing it. I wasn't really you know. I woke up that morning and I was like, huh, okay, this this might be something. And in the dream, we were outdoors. I knew Kyle was there, okay, and and there could have been other people around, but I wasn't. It wasn't important in the dream, obviously, because it wasn't revealed to me. 
We were in a wooded area. There were very tall trees all around. And as I was walking around, I just got the sense, and it was almost like, you know, when a wild animal is just super, you know, agile and can just dart. And you, you can see that the shadow just flashed by or the sprint of the creature, but you don't know what it is. I knew I was in danger. I knew that whoever was outdoors was in danger because this was a, a creature that was obviously faster than what we could get away from in our own human, you know, speed and strength and everything. So as I got that heightened sense of alarm, um, I started just saying, you know, something was just saying, make it to the building. So as I ran towards the building, I ended up thinking in my mind, my logic was to make it to the highest ground, make it to the highest floor. So the dream shifted to, I don't remember going up any stairs or anything like that. I was just in that upper room. And I know the, the term upper room is synonymous with, you know, the upper room in the Bible, but I'm saying that because that was the top floor, the upper room. Top, you know. churches. Yes, and just a little side note, yeah, like he said, we are in an upstairs room, and we, we've been laughing and calling it the upper room, you know. I said that when I first walked in. You're like, oh yeah, pretty pretty ironic. So um, so we made it into the, into the upper room, and, and what I do recall is that I saw Kyle and he was literally so peaceful and unmoved no talking it was as if I'm like I am tizzied you know because I know that there is a creature and I realized that this creature was a tiger and in hindsight as I analyzed the dream I thought Lord but you know I don't know about the tiger because that's really not biblical because the tiger is not in the Bible the lion you know it's the lion well, so it, it propelled me to go into the literature, which is my homeschool literature, Apology of Science has, and I just happened to be teaching this year, the sixth day of creation, which talks about all the land animals. So I went straight to that resource and I began to read and it had lions first, so I read about lions. And as I began to read about the tiger, I saw really quick, the tiger can, is it substantially bigger than the lion. The tiger is a predator that, that travels alone is a predator that likes to jump from the trees, can reach, at least they, they said it can extend 11 feet. Um, it is a loner. It does not travel with other tigers. And it likes, it prefers the thick jungle and that it has these stripes because as the light pierces into the jungle, it can blend with its environment better so that it can jump at you and be completely undetected. And by, basically by the time it's leapt at you, you're already done. That's the enemy sniper too. Yeah, it literally, and it is. And I thought about the size of this animal. These tigers can get up to 650 pounds. So it's bigger than lions. I mean, and, and like I said, it's a, it's this lone animal that is, you know, that can even swim. And it talked about how the only bye. animal, bye, bye, the only animal that can defeat this tiger is a crocodile. And it's because when the when the tiger gets in the water, the crocodile obviously has the maneuvering ability and the in the strength and whatever. So anyway, so that gives you the context about the tiger. I jumped way ahead, but in that room, Kyle was at peace. Everything on his side was just like no worries. And I had there were windows. I can recall there's a window and a window, and then I looked to my right in the room and there was another window. And I thought, any minute now whatever this is I just finally knew it was a tiger and I thought oh lord help us because I know a tiger can climb trees I know a tiger can leap I, and those were the few things I did know so at that point I was like this thing is going to burst through this window at any moment and we're going to be dead and so I looked out that window to my right which I just now had a connection of right hand um, but I looked to my right and looked through the window and something Someone had contained this tiger, and this tiger was furious. This tiger was literally ferociously tearing at the, at the air. But what was so ironic about it is this tiger wasn't contained in a cage where it could leap up or even stand up and posture itself in any kind of way. This tiger was forced to crouch down because this cage had a flat roof on it. It reminded me of a basket that has a flat bottom that has, yeah, literally, he was literally pressed down yeah, almost like in humbled position because he couldn't stand up. He was forced to go low. And he was angry and as he's he's looking up just tearing at the at the at the air, like trying to get out of this thing as but he couldn't get his obviously he couldn't get his he couldn't stand up. And I thought to myself, I don't know how. Who who could have contained him? 
And uh, but I just I remember feeling grateful. But I thought, wow, this is incredible. So we were not in danger. We were in the upper room. Kyle was at was at complete peace about this. Um, and we were supernaturally pretty much raptured into this situation because I don't know how we would have survived the uh, an, a tiger attack out there, which would have been imminent. I mean, imminent death otherwise. So as I began to look into the nature and the way that tigers were made to, to be in nature, I, I knew immediately. I said, okay, I got to share this because I think this is something. So yeah, that was my dream. Awesome. Right on the back of all that. So there you Good go. Deal. Good deal. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you a question about the thing? Because sure. there's a couple things I don't understand. I, yeah, so when you when you first saw the tiger, you were outside, and you said you were kind of transported in the building. Yeah, like, the thing of it was is you know how you can have a dream, and it's not you're not in like real time doing everything, but you somehow yeah somehow you've you've transitioned into another place, yeah. but you don't recall how you got there, and it's not even an issue to you in the dream, you know. Right. It's just like you're here. And, and in that case, I was glad because I felt a little safer then, but I was still, I almost felt like I got to warn people. That was my whole m mindset was, I have to warn people. I have to warn people because, you know, I'm thinking also there's people maybe still outside or we are still in danger yeah. um, because I knew that the windows were, could be compromised. I knew that the, the doorways, I knew that this creature was extremely fast. I just remember, you know, by the time you've turned to look, because you catch it out of your peripheral, it's already darted and it's gone. And so it was it was really one of those things where it's like, what is this? And when I saw what it was, it was a tiger. <laughs> and I'm guessing we're going to talk about the interpretation because I, I know Jeremy had some revelation on that. And I yeah. hear all of it, but yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I have one thing. What'd the transportation might have, like going from an unsafe place to a safe place might have been a rapture. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were kind of raptured up, you know, yeah. into that realm, into that room, I mean. So. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, what the Lord was giving me as far as the tiger is um, a religious spirit mm -hmm. um, or Satan himself because, you know, Satan roars or prowls about like a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. That was the first scripture that popped up in my spirit when she was telling the dream over the it was over your prayer line, and uh, then what else was there? I, I felt like her coming into the them coming into the building was like them coming into the full the unity, like God was partner it was that partnership. So it was that confirmation mm -hmm. of of everything, and and then when we were make it into as the covering a, as, a, as a one unit, we were able to bind. The tiger essentially wow. pressed the tiger down. So, um, I and maybe so though, your role as a watch person too, that's because yes, that you was were so concerned about that, and you saw it because you're the you were the a watcher. The watch person. Yes, watch that was person. exactly what I was thinking, and I, that was the sense that I got, and it kind of just continuously is you know, brought back to my attention. And it was like, you did say that you felt like Kyle was a re representative of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I thought that was good because he is the spiritual leader of my home. And I, you know, I trust his leadership over me and, you know, and he's obviously going to hear from God for the direction of our family. Um, but yeah, I really, really, I loved that this thing in the end was contained. I just thought, and, and that's another and thing. You know, Satan's going to be bound. Too, right. 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 Mm -hmm. right. And, and. Yeah, and it speaks of our authority over Satan as we come into unity. Right. Yes. We come into the covering of this, his authority. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. So, totally yeah, agree. But, uh, but as you were speaking, the Lord was actually giving me some more, like, the windows. I mean, it says uh, eyes are windows of our soul. Yes. So windows could be represented of portals or souls. Yes. Well. Yeah. So yeah. So you were, you were kind of looking out the windows like wondering you got to warn people that's the watchman again mm -hmm. you got to blow the trumpet to warn the people upper room is symbolic of the upper room and y'all's church yes and also um you got something 
also most uh, when I think of Watchmen, I think of people on a Watchmen. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yes. Yeah, you're up high. Yeah, that's actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. How do you find yeah. the the threat if you can't get on high ground to be able to see the threat? So. So that's that's one of the reason the Lord's had us. So war. So eagles in the Bible represent not just prophets but seer prophets. Oh yeah. And it's it's coming up higher that's to a high place. To see things from God's perspective, yes. to get that eagle eye view, that sniper mm-hmm. position, because that's what a sniper does. They look for usually high ground, mm-hmm. like the watchtower. Or, and I showed, I remember showing Dash, Saving Private Ryan. We watched oh. it on Vid Angel, so we cut out the cussing, yeah. yes. not the blood, because war is bloody, right? And you know, but we, you know, the Lord, I, I felt like it was the Lord led me to show him that movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, but war is real. Yes. 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 Amen. But, Amen. Yeah. One thing. I'll say it first. Okay. <laughs> one thing. One thing that I feel is that as a watchman, mm-hmm. we have to be careful not to get into fear. Mm-hmm. No, sure. I completely, yeah, that's, that's I completely okay. receive that because I don't see myself as a fearful person whatsoever. But, sometimes, but in that moment, I was fearful. A lot of sometimes watchmen you know? can get into that fear. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So can't give way to that him, fear. When you saw him, you saw that he wasn't. Right. And and, so, and he yeah. almost took that as, you're going to tell that dream and that's going to make me look like I'm some kind of, no, you know, no, complacent. I was like, no, no, no. no. You think, gave me peace in that dream. I, I that received that peace. Y'all balance each other. Right. Yeah. right. But I and think he's, sometimes we can see that and we it makes us realize I got a little different. Yes, yes. And so we Or fearing be, for other people even too. That was another thing like. Yeah. But, that, oh. but that's, but sometimes you do need to warn. Yeah. But, because mm, because I can catch myself because I walked and, and I don't need to get into it, but I walked out and I saw a tree that was getting ready. She was there that was getting ready. <laughs> it was getting ready to fall. It had been hit by lightning right. six months earlier. I'm right. I was getting ready to fall and I was like, Lord, who do I call? <laughs> you know. She came and in praying. The name and of the, the Lord, Lord caught me on it. And he said, talk to me. Yes. And so. And this tree fell. The, uh, we got they pray, pictures. They prayed it went the other way and, first. And no right. cars and were passing by. Yeah. And so, Nobody was passing by when it fell. And so I said. But well, it was a niece who was big, on the way home. Wow. Happened to get Boom. Because we were. Gosh. Tree is and so I talked to him. And I said, sure. Lord, okay, get your angels in. Mm-hmm. And. and don't let it hit any of these houses. Don't let it hit the fences. Don't let any cars be under it. And when I walked in, Chrissy goes, who are you talking to? And I said, God, the tree's falling. <laughs> yeah. The tree's falling. So I was and trying so, to fix her laptop at the time. And that, right I just got, got Ellie to sleep. Right when I got through talking to her, it went, boom. Oh, my goodness. And so she got in her car and ran up there. And sure enough, it fell right where I asked him to let it fall. Yeah. Uh, so it's like you can't let, you You got to know the difference between mm-hmm. feeling that caution and that quickening and not taking too much time because I got to thinking just now, you know, I personally can't stand to see anybody bound in fear because I'm ready to meet Jesus. I don't care. I am totally that that person. But when I look out at others, but it could be that I needed to, instead of feeling like, instead of feeling that fear for them, maybe that instead turn that fear to God and say, listen, I surrender that. Yes. And I'm going to pray for you rather than so feel scared. The fear of the people. Yeah. Fear for them. So that could, yeah, so that's what I said. Yeah. There's a balance. So it, it creates a sense of urgency, urgency, fire under our butt. but if you take that urgency out witnessing, you end up looking like a crazy. Patient. Okay. Okay. So it's a balance. So it's yeah. an urgency to get people, the church ready so that's that's kind of the prophet's call. It's the mandate. The watchman type prophet is mm. is called to blow the trumpet. It's not to warn just the the unbelievers because that's more on like the evangel. And we're all supposed yeah. to be a, a little bit of everything, but it, the prophet's job is to wake the church up. Yes. So oh my gosh. Sometimes he's telling you something's getting ready to happen. Oh yes. Church and there's the urgency. That's what it is. That energy. That nervous it's kind of like. God, and so pray about it is the solution. Until it lifts. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you're, 
you, I know yeah, on the phone something. you had mentioned something about the tree as yeah. well, the tiger. Is it, yeah. was, the, was the tiger in the tree? This is what was so yes. funny. So that's what I was thinking. It was, it was the cup, it represented covering of like religious right, churches. Right, right. So and it was prowling about within the religious confines. Right. Yeah, and it could have came from any direction. And I think the fact of it was is the trees were a little too close to those windows for my taste. And my liking, and I thought to myself, this creature is going to crawl up this, it's going to climb, and it's going to burst through this window. So another thing I just thought about was how a religious spirit, I don't want, if it's a religious spirit, to come into this upper room and and, fi and devour anybody. And I don't know, but I just I love that we discussed it because I think I just maybe even got more insight. So, But, I mean, obviously to, to pray. Yeah, yes. Yes, the quickening of that. Yes. That was good. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Sure. Good. Yeah. Very good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the live stream. Um, if y'all have any prayer requests, feel free to comment or whatever. And uh, God bless you guys. First you're going to join us for communion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, communion. I'm going to yeah, it's it's not recording anymore, so we got a little thing to play. That was good, y'all. Very good.